Many customers keep asking us, hey, what is the right mobile robot provider for me? And honestly, it's very hard to answer this question generally. But what we can provide is a list of red flags. Red flags of mobile robots providers. So stay with us and learn how to distinguish the good ones from the fishy ones. Welcome back to another episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast. It's been a long, long time since we recorded in the studio. And honestly, I almost didn't find a way back to the studio. Oli, how did you feel? Yeah, thank God you found your way. And I'm really happy to be back again. Right. So we have a great topic for you guys today, hopefully with some uh, value add. Um, and we want to talk about red flags in, well, selecting a mobile robots provider. Yeah, as you already said in your intro, it's really difficult to distinguish the right partner for your automation project. And of course, uh, within a podcast episode, uh, we cannot explain how to do it. But um, based on our experience, we found clear red flags that will tell you that this is the wrong partner. Right. Let's call them indicators. Um, a red flag is always so reddish and so, uh, well, so, I don't know how to say it, but uh, sounds so... <sighs> close to death. Close to death. Close to death and close to catastrophe. <laughs> so let's go with indicators. And um, we're going to boil it down to five. We're going to boil it down to five because it's a great number to remember. And... Um, this is going to be all about Oli's experience here, actually. So the stage is yours. And um, which is the first one? Yeah, so let's go along a typical um, automation life cycle. Right. From selecting the supplier over project to go live, I would say. Yeah, so what is happening at the beginning? You have a look what suppliers are available, which have the right robot for you, and so on. And what is a typical desire of many um, customers, they would like to see them running somewhere, right? Correct. And then something happens, and Halloween is coming up soon, yeah, <laughs> uh, which I call the vampire reference customer effect. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So tell us more about the vampire aspect of that. Yeah, I mean, what will happen to vampires if you start shedding some light uh, full hair. Yeah, it's uh, they will disappear very, very, very quickly. Actually, I heard. I don't know. Never met one, but and the same happens for these reference customers. <laughs> um, in the powerpoints, in the meetings, they have other customers, of course, mm -hmm. and they uh, these these um, mobile robot suppliers t will tell you. Yeah, you, you, we can organize a visit, even uh, maybe close to your city. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And then you actually say, okay, cool, let's do it. Yeah. Um, please organize it. I would really like to talk to another customer, mm -hmm. hear the experiences, how the project went, what are they actually doing with the robots and so on. Yeah. And then for some reason, um, this uh, meeting, this event never happens. Never happens. Yeah. Customer is sick, customer doesn't answer. They don't want you to come, you know, uh, the, oh, yeah, yeah, they are competitors, whatever. Compliance. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that already sounds a bit fishy. Um, and the good thing is it's not yet too late, right? Because it's in a very early stage of selecting the supplier. So, um, yeah, that would definitely be one indicator to maybe question your your choice here. Okay. Then maybe let's say you accept it. Um, maybe it's also uh, the truth, yeah, that it's not possible because of some reason. Yeah. Then there is the next um, indicator. Yeah. You would like to see the robot running anyway, and you suggest to do a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. To test the robot in your facility, on your shop floor, that's also a typical wish 
especially if the um, mobile robot supplier is new for you. Of yeah. course, yeah. I mean, it, you you want to see it running somehow, somewhere, and best case in your own environment, so you can check out if this is a fit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially in your environment. I mean, it's it's great to have other customers, but other customers might have different processes, different IT landscape, uh, better or worse periphery, right? Um, so all of this is is nice, but you want to see it running in your own facility, in your own processes. So that's something you should either way definitely do. But uh, well, back to Oli. And you know what happens then? I don't do it. They will not do it. The unwillingness to conduct a proof of concept. What are the typical arguments? Yeah, it's, they want to do a project directly. They say that it's very difficult to get the robot into a facility. They say they need a, a whole IT infrastructure for it. They need a server and you cannot set it up that quickly. And, and then first they need to talk to an integrator and... I mean, if it's already that difficult <laughs> to get a robot to your location, to let it run, to to test simple cases like yeah. picking up from the floor, stuff like that. If this is already so difficult, how can I do a real project with several robots with that supplier? Right. And again, if you haven't visited the reference customer, you haven't done the proof of concept, how can I buy something I've never seen running? Yes, tricky or brave, um, but but just for the record, Oli, there they, they are providers out there that would they would do a proof of concept. They would be totally fine with it. They would be they would be um, able to do this in a small scale, quick setup. So this is possible, right? Sure. Um, okay. it, it's usually one week, maybe two weeks. The good ones let uh, you play with the device. Mm -hmm. uh, let you um, maybe map it or or add uh, or change stations. This is the, these are the high class uh, suppliers, yeah. but at least they will be open to come to your location and set up as one or two simple jobs uh, yeah. which the robot can do in in a certain space. Uh, yeah, maybe it cannot run freely and so on, but um, for sure it must be possible. Okay, check. So indicator number two, I think discussed to uh, full extent. Let's move on. What is your third indicator? Yeah, let's uh, move along the life cycle and already go towards you. You signed the contract. Yeah, you you are you bought them or you are um, you want to release the purchase order and then you realize, oh, actually we don't have any real spec book written. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about it several times. Yeah, a spec book is a the must. In, yeah. yeah, it's a must in every project. But now, what's the indicator of a fishy supplier that he will accept the non-existence of the spec book mm -hmm. and just say, "Okay, good. We we talked about it. We had the meeting. You told me you need five robots. Here is our offer. Go for it. Got it. And I can tell you, nine of ten projects." will go sideways. Yeah. So that means um, even if you didn't prepare a spec book yourself to, you know, to, um, to, to, to be signed by the, by the provider, by the supplier, which we either way uh, highly recommend, um, he or she, the supplier, um, doesn't step up with her own spec book for, for, for you to sign, right? That's what you're saying, Oli. So, so you forgot about it, but he's also not really, you know, talking about it, not really making any fuss of creating one. And and that's exactly the point where things get a little bit uh, fishy, so to say. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best choice to let the supplier write the spec book. That's, that's for sure. That's a totally different but discussion, at, yeah. At least um, they should um, help you or yeah. offer support in writing it. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you never did it before, they can provide you a template or ask questions you should answer. That's fine. But if they just accept uh, some mails or uh, meeting minutes mm -hmm. and say, okay, based on that, we will um, write the offer, that's that's not enough and it will go wrong. Mm. Okay. Good. 
So I think this is clear. Um, let's move on. What else do we have in the life cycle? All right, we move on. We Actually, we're coming to the to the <laughs> to the time mm. in the project where it's actually too late. It's getting worse now. Right. Okay. So <laughs> let's bring it on. So no reference customer, no proof of concept, no spec book. Mm -hmm. Still, you went uh, for this supplier. Yeah. And now there is the the go life, go life week, and. Sometimes it happens that out of a go life day, um, it <laughs> develops towards a go life week and two months. And we even seen projects where we are talking about the stabilization because then it's no longer go life. Yeah. Then they are talking about a stabilization phase, mm. which is uh, a lie because a stabilization phase is a planned thing. But here it's a delayed go live actually mm -hmm. because they're never running in a stable way and sometimes it's a never ending story mm -hmm. so you always keep having uh, the provider or your staff on site to to fix boxes to analyze to rework mm -hmm. endlessly right that's already not so bad if they are still um, in your location right but yeah. sometimes they come for this go live week Yep. And then they they go back. They go just they go home because the technician is already planned for a next project, and then you are there with your ten whatever uh, robots. Yeah, and they are just not running. They are stopping. They they lose lose um, track. Uh, you know, and and you are there with your key user who is half trained, and you cannot solve it. And you you call the supplier, please come back. Yeah. And what is the answer? <laughs> yeah, I need to check the capacity of my technicians and okay. we will come back soon. Okay. Ouch. Ouch. That's not a situation you would like to be in, right? Um, any any countermeasures that, that, that we can still do, that we can still set in place? Or is it too late? I have to accept it. I, I, I switch off the button and I just throw everything away. No, you are already in escalation mode. Uh, or you should um, escalate quickly. Quickly, okay. And uh, raise the awareness on the supplier side and do whatever you can to to get the supplier back Got it. And, and, and get the devices running. But to be honest, this is already uh, a worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm very... Uh, um... <laughs> I'm very, very interested in your last point because you already say we're in the in the worst case scenario. Yeah. Uh, so, so can it get even worse, Oli? Yeah, the ultimate worst case. Okay, and the worst case XXL. Yes, because now we are talking about not achieved targets, <laughs> and that's the the ROI that never comes. The return on invest would never kicks in. So. You had this great calculation, hopefully somewhere, which is showing some kind of return on invest for these devices after one, two, three years, five, I don't know. But it never materializes. So you have the robots there. They are working like 50-50. Sometimes they work, sometimes not, whatever. You, you don't get it stable. Uh, don't get it stable. And you will never end up um, getting more efficient. You never end up cutting people out, right? Can be even a negative return in the worst, worst case. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen, you plan to reduce whatever to people. Yeah. But in parallel, you had to develop a key user, yeah. you know, to, for to take care. Support, yeah. third level support, second level, whatever to take care, to organize your fleet. And what can happen that you haven't reduced um, the direct personnel, but you increased the indirect office person. Got it. Even more expensive. Mm -hmm. And you end up with a negative return. So you pay more for the same process mm -hmm. and you have some cool robots running around. You have a showcase at least. At least you have a showcase. At least it's a learning you know, yeah. always when things uh, go sideways, we call it learning and we can uh, we try to sell it to our managers. But to be honest, it's uh, the content of your next 
Fuck up night. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Um, at least some positive aspect in all of that. Um, quick re uh, recap, Oli. What are the five points? Yeah, so we start with the not existing reference customers. Right. Then we have the unwillingness to conduct the proof of concept. Then we are accepting the non-existence of a spec book. Mm -hmm. uh, then the never-ending go-life or stabilization phase. Yeah, and then we end up with an ROI that is never there. Eternal. Yeah, that's negative. Okay. So... Guys, hope this is helping you to take the right choices, um, or at least to avoid the very, very fishy ones that are out there. Um, if you like this, if this content is helping you, make sure to follow us. You can follow on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Spotify, um, and listen to us. Every two weeks, we release a new podcast episode that is full of insights, full of lessons learned, full of tips, and also with great guests, on the show exactly so i would say take care guys in two weeks see you in two weeks bye bye, bye. bye.